Entramos en la recta final, nos quedan tres ponencias, nada más, y con eso vamos a acabar. Ahora tengo el placer de presentaros a una persona, a un, a un chico realmente, porque sigue siendo un chico de 29 años de Alcoy, que se ha dedicado ni más ni menos que a pulverizar todos los límites y todos los techos que le han puesto. Y yo creo que lo está consiguiendo y después de que lo escuchéis yo pienso que también vais a pensar que lo ha conseguido. Irra García, Irra García ha estudiado en Fundesen, hizo un máster de marketing en Fundesen, siguió su formación en los Estados Unidos, en la UCA, en Arkansas. En la actualidad es director de la, de la social media en la Diputación de Valencia, cofundador de uno de los eventos más importantes a nivel de social media que es Adictos Social Media. Inter, speaker internacional, profesor, consultor y lo que queráis. A nivel personal es lo no tiene absolutamente ningún límite. Una persona que se ha, pre se, ha pre se ha preparado un medio Ironman en apenas tres meses. ¿Vale? O sea que a nivel personal también se dedica a pulverizar todos los límites que le pongan. Está colaborando en la actualidad ni más ni, medio, ni, más ni menos que con, Black con empresas como BlackBerry, Pioneer UK y MTV y ya acaba de lanzar la agencia Monk en Roma, Londres y Sao Paulo. Y todo eso solamente con 29 años y viniendo de Alcoy con todo mi respeto. ¿eh? ¿Vale? Pero es al alcoyano a muerte. Por deciros algo más, un auténtico rebelde, un inconformista, un innovador y una persona que da gusto estar a su lado porque te, te recarga las pilas y te recarga el positivismo. Sin más rodeos, os dejo con Irra. No, concédeme esos 15 minutos que os había dicho. Eh, os iba a decir, ¿habéis visto alguna vez algún alcoyano hablando inglés? Y de aquí habrá gente que me puede decir, sí. ¿Pero habéis visto algún alcoyano hablando inglés en TED? Les do this. When I was five years old, I could never have imagined that I would be working at a textile factory at 21. But even more astonishing is that it was that when I was 21, I could not have foreseen that I would create a uh, 28. I will, I will come up with an idea of a new kind of media beyond our social media and technology. And neither, of course, be speaking to you today. You never know what is, go what is going to happen tomorrow. Planning is informed guessing. The only thing you can do is embrace change as part of your everyday life while doing what you love because you love what you do. I've been always been passionate about online media, human interactions, and people. As I believe, these are the only factors that can shake up the world. On the other hand, I've been involved in social media for more than four years. And during all this time, I felt that something was missing from the big picture. Something was not in the game. We had forgotten something. Perhaps it was the human part of the Internet. I just needed to find an appropriate language to express it. I'm going to talk to you about the new use of online media, which leverages the social web through human relationships. And this is human media. However, I think some background information will be useful to comprehend this change and how to apply it effectively to your environment and, of course, the business world. The revolution you started with social media, which is the root of human media. This may look like a, a reverse process, a paradox. As is generally assumed that social communication should come out of human interactions. Maybe this has been the mistake. Using technology and social media to manage, categorize, select, and trivialize online communities. That is, people, we often forget that this connection should be made based on human values, emotions, needs, and wants. Allow me to point out that when you listen, understand, act, respond, build relationships, connect, and engage emotionally, you being human, not social. Therefore, the social media challenge is to get back to human nature. The misuse of social media has already started, and it's happening right now. And we need to be aware of this fact, because it's going to change the online landscape, the way we market, and the way we do business online. Therefore, the way that the world is doing business right now. We live in a world of, we live in a world of information overload, and this saturation is already reaching the social media environment. No, because, no because there are too many people using it, no, but due to the way they are using it. The social hype, social media mega experts, community managers, seniors with six years experience, online masters that will save your life, and brands claiming we are the solution to all your problems. They have transformed the opportunity to connect our audience, align business models to their needs into a blah, blah movement, which is noise. 
Many messages aimed in the same direction with no opportunity to reply. Intrusive communication. People who abuse social media, disturbing others, and not creating any form of conversation at all. And businesses mindlessly participating on the social web. More and more brands and marketing professionals dedicating their time to publishing without getting a response or even creating a chance to give one without feelings or coherence, without worrying about people beyond an artificial platform or tool. And this is what I call disruption media. The eruption of, sell of social media as sales pitches with the wrong goals and strategy, both artificial and short term. They have generated a new social media breach which is what once happened to conventional marketing. And now, it seems that it's happening again. Doesn't anybody realize that we are creating this brilliant opportunity to create value, connect people, and get something in return? Call it return on investment if you want. Yes, we're getting back to the mass marketing era, to the over society, to the one million message TV system, to the one-way communication business scenario. We have accepted the phenomenon of communication based on non-communication. So many tools, so many channels, so many platforms, lots of all that have is building off expectation and then consequent disappointment. And this is what disrupts communication, the message, people, and therefore, business. I can tell you something. Robots are not sexy. And artificial ain't cool. What really matters is not your Facebook or your Twitter account, your LinkedIn profile, your four square check-ins. Those won't come to you and buy your products. They won't tell their friends about your services. Nor they, nor they will become your loyal clients. I really doubt that they will save a table for you at your favorite restaurant. Or even buy a flight for your next trip. I have a hard time believing that they will make you laugh, cry, or fall in love at first sight. Or at second. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that social media is not magic. But, and this is a great but, we don't have to accept these practices anymore as we did in the past. Overloading people with mass communication, attacking them with intrusive marketing, special spam, and excessive promotion. This is what had brought us to this point, but it won't get us any further. I won't achieve our business goals. This is the, the good part. The game has changed. So, hack the rules. Welcome to the disruption era. This gives us the opportunity to make use of the new media to transmit our values, abilities, feelings, and knowledge to the Internet. All of this while we are using human relationships to make business happen. In a world where everybody relentlessly competes in a technological way, we lose if we do the same. The only way to win is to compete in our own way, in a remarkably human way. So what's happening here now? Due to the disruption of social media and the opportunity that new, the new media still afford us, we need a redesignal model. A redesignal model that focuses on the right thing. The most powerful tool on earth. People. A fundamental shift is needed in the way we communicate, market, and do business. This shift relies on the convergence of people, human interactions, and the social web. Sorry. Human media goes deeper than marketing 3.0 or the web 3.0, simply because it makes it possible for a company to offer products and services that meet and exceed the client's expectations. How? Simply because the client realizes that they, has, they have someone to connect at the other end of the media. They find common means to communicate and be listened to. And this leads to what I call human business interactions, the human media currency. This is the right time to connect people and businesses, create value, generate loyalty, maximize leads, turn the social web into a powerful business generator, create human conversations, and so be involved in human interactions. All of this on the basis of gaining great relevance and reach, showing the world what we stand for. Doesn't that sound brilliant? It's not about Technologies, large generation software, social networks, or gadgets. It's actually something more basic. It's about something straightforward. It's about people, it's about resonance, influence, and alignment. However, 
In a new environment where everything still remains to be defined, we misdirect our energies toward the moment called now. Human media goes beyond the current moment. It helps you to compete for relevance, influence, and leverage in the long term, dealing with people and not with likes or tweets. As we, as we say, as we, as we say before, the, the true importance of this new form of communication does not rely solely on the word social, classes, groups, segments, lifestyles, behaviors, but also on the human part of it. Feelings, emotions, needs, values, meaning, and individuality. You achieve this mainly by staying human. By simply understanding that the idea of staying human is the key. We will see how this perspective drives a fundamental change in the way we relate to other people within interactive environments, within the internet. When I started in new media, it was early 2007, and it was introduced to me unexpectedly by American and British colleagues. At the beginning, I didn't want just to make a sell. What mattered to me was becoming known by a lot of people, and it didn't mean talking about me, my company, or fooling around. If that is all, how many people can you meet and make a difference to, uh, on, on the social web on a daily basis? I started building relationships with people that have things in common, sharing information and thoughts. Highlighting people who were doing work that I thought mattered. Trying to connect, him, to connect people and businesses and make something happen. All of this brought me closer to them. Then, from time to time, I was reaching out to these people to see how things were going and if I can be of any assistance. Suddenly, among other things, I found myself working for a New York healthcare company social media project, being appointed as social media advisor for a London-based agency, or, or being hired to speak in countries such as Australia, Mexico, the US. I was simple. I just did one thing, being and remaining human on the internet. Well, actually, it's two things. Let's talk about the impact that human media has on the web. That's the new ecosystem. The other day, during Panama Chushiro conference, I was asked whether I believe that the connection between people is generated by the new technological developments, such as HTML5, social TV, open graph. My response was simple. Of course they help, but never forget that behind all that, there is a person who is creating the necessary moves, having the intention to connect, create relationships, communicate, or make business transactions happen. Human media means that if there is no connection, there is no engagement. Therefore, the management, or rather the leadership, is not related to platforms, media, or tools, but to feelings, senses, emotions, or actions. And that way things get more complicated. But, the good news is that we should focus on the human part of it. There is not an app for people. When we launch an online strategy, we should go the extra mile. And we must look at people, behaviors, and feelings as well as numbers, figures, and stats, and give them the same importance. Everyone, everyone wants to make a quick sale and leave, but that's not how it's working today. First, we must connect by creating a, by creating relationship based on needs, trust, trust, care, credibility, and commitment. Then people will not only buy from you, but they will also tell their friends to do so. And I can tell you that you notice the, the return on investment from that moment on. What about the impact on business and brands? Nowadays, brand, businesses, companies try their best to transfer everything online, but through all this process, they forget what's most important, to also transfer their identity and culture, and do it in the most human way possible, not a social way. Actually, it's something beyond social business. It's human business. They must, they must connect and sh must, they should electrify that the way that the Internet and the social web connect us. Through, through frameworks and make transparency a must when it comes to sharing information and doing business. This factor together with a few others as authenticity, humility, humility, empathy, humor, or the emotional touch points such as warmth, storytelling, love, supports the human interactions through frameworks between both points of the online bridge. Nowadays, being measurable isn't always the only thing that matters. Brands such as Coca-Cola so and demonstrate how a brand can be humanized. The emphasis on values and feelings such as nostalgia, joy, happiness. But not only this, they will also they share their failures as well as the successes which undoubtedly fosters community and makes them more human and appealing. And it seems that this keeps them on track. In the case of company, human interactions are the core. They have a business structure adaptable to people and are focused on human relationships 
as a currency. And a new hierarchy based on interaction, relation, communication. Definitely, this is a business model going through a human economy and looking for a human return on investment. This is why the efforts are concentrated towards generating positive emotions, both internally and externally. Look at Comcast, Dell, Focus, uh, Ford, Google, Zappos, Starbucks. They keep connection and interaction simple, accessible, and personalized. Because they know that this is the key, and also the way to obtain a significant return on investment. We, the brands, must mingle at the party if we want to live from our audience. Nowadays, brands are more human than ever, and they, they undertake a process they call human branding, which is controlling how the brand connects with the audience, what happens in its online environment, and how it affects them. Which platform or tools it uses to do so, and how it leverages the, so the human interactions through a social web. But there is still something missing here. Who is doing all this? I call them human leaders. This concept refers to all the people who use this, the web to add a human touch to their business and lead communities with transparency, honesty, attunement, charisma, and authentic relationships. We've discovered that the people who understand how to use the, how, how to build relationships through a social web know how to make business work by using the same knowledge. They are people-driven and technologically business-oriented. Are, uh, are we human leaders? I spend 60% uh, of my time interacting and connecting with people, expanding relationships on LinkedIn, uh, responding to tweets, publishing actionable posts that equip people, uh, reading blogs, Answering, uh, answering uh, comment, commenting on the blogs, answering comments on my blog, always looking for ways to create value for the community. And of course, bringing the relationship through the real world. It takes time and commitment, but the more I interact and connect with people, the more luck I have. If this continues in that way, I'm confident of increasing this over the 70%. To sum up, Human media isn't a new platform, a tool, or a new medium. Neither a new marketing discipline. It's a new way of marketing and communicating. It's a new perspective focused on how individuals and businesses align, resonate, act, feel, and respond to the human interactions that are happening on the Internet. Everybody says, and this is the, the part I like the most, that we live in awful times with people with values and businesses that lost their way. Let me give the alternative view. I think we live in incredible times with phenomenal people and mind-blowing opportunities for businesses. And one of these opportunities is human media. And it works because it takes as its, as its principle the only thing that can truly create a fundamental change. People. Here you have the new business paradigm shift. You are thrilling, brilliant, incredible, and capable of doing unimaginable things. And that is exactly what we were talking about. The potential of human media is within you, 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 and all of us. People are specifically the key of this new communication concept and the new marketing era. Social media and technology won't change the world. People will. So... Why not constantly focus on that? Thank you. Appreciate it. Bueno, muchas gracias, Sierra. Bueno, no sonaba mal el inglés al collano, ¿no? Al final ha sonado bien, ¿no? Bueno, por añadiros algo más sobre Irra, es el fundador del concepto Human Media Interactions, que a partir de ahora seguro que os va, os va a sonar mucho más y, os, y os, lo vais a escuchar mucho más, sobre todo a nivel de Internet.